What type of internet connection should you choose for your charter school? My name is Jeremy Chara, and we get this question all the time because we work exclusively with charter schools. Charter schools are different. They have different personalities. They have different uh, ways to approach education than district schools or, of course, businesses. So they actually have options when it comes to the type of internet connection they choose. One size does not fit all. So I have a question for you to start this whole thing off. What kind of personality does your charter school have? We see some charter schools that take a classical approach to education. So there is no one-to-one -one model. Students don't come in with electronic devices. They sit and participate in groups. They might watch a video online, but usually that charter school's approach to, to education is not technology centric. So student testing might be about the only time you see a whole bunch of laptops coming out, right? Or do you have a more technology integrated approach to education? Do you do a lot of remote classes to where teachers are uh, teaching from remote locations? Or maybe you have teachers on campus that have remote students. That whole thing changes the game, right? So, so first off, that's the question I would have for you is, is what personality does your school have and how internet dependent are you? If the internet goes down at your location, is that a big deal? Like if, if, if you immediately like, Ugh, like that tells you something, right? And that even says, okay, maybe one internet connection is not enough. So let me talk about the big picture genres of internet connections. Two major categories, fiber optic and copper. That's really the kind of cable that you're using to bring in the internet connection. A fiber optic connection is going to be, first off, the most expensive kind of connection that you can get, but more reliable and more options when it comes to bandwidth. I'm gonna give you a big word right now. Fiber optic connections are typically synchronous. That means the download speed and the upload speed that you have on that connection is the same. So if you get a hundred megabit per second or a thousand megabit per second gigabit uh, connectivity to the internet, you have a gigabit down and a gigabit up. Why is that a big deal? Well, it didn't used to be back in the day when all we did was download, download. We were consumers from the internet, right? Your classrooms would just be watching videos and, and people surfing the net, getting email, get, 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 right? COVID changed everything. When we ran into COVID and everybody went remote and started doing remote classes, now the upload speed matters in a big way. So that's a big question for you. Fiber optic, as, as I said, is more reliable and it has more bandwidth, but it also comes with more cost. Copper, on the other hand, if you just download, if you're not technology centric, then copper might be just fine. And what do I mean by copper? I mean coax, connections, as in cable modems, DSL, those are all copper. And those are, here's your other big word, asynchronous, meaning you get more download speed than you do upload. <laughs> now, why do they do that? Well, because they only have a certain amount of frequency they can use on that copper cable. And they say, well, no, there's, there's a lot more downloading than, than uploading. So let's, let's make it asynchronous. Let's mismatch it and give people more of what they typically want. So, Again, back to your school's personality. If you have a lot of remote classes, if you are very internet dependent, if the internet connection going down it is like, ah, it's panic, that's where you want to go with fiber. You want that synchronous connection. If you are exactly the opposite, which I don't have to say that all, then coax might work uh, or DSL connections might work over on the other side. Now, if you're extremely technology centric or you want to break apart your bandwidth, you might decide on both. What I mean is fiber optic is your primary and often what I see schools doing is they'll dedicate that internet connection to what, what a technologist would call production, the classroom, faculty doing their work and they'll bring in a secondary connection for the public Wi-Fi. People that, you know, students that are just surfing the net and doing all kinds of things. They segment that out completely and you'll often have both. One thing to consider if you're adding that backup connection, it's not as easy as just plugging in the second one. There is quite a bit of configuration expertise to figure out how to fail over if one connection goes down to jump over to the other or even more needed if you're trying to figure out how to use them both at the same time. Speaking of configuration expertise, there are two connections out there that I would just be cautious of because I've seen a lot of schools get them and then go, 
Oh my goodness. It is Metro E and Dark Fiber. There is a tremendous amount of technical knowledge needed to make one of those connections work. Uh, truth be told, they're, they're not even internet connections. It's kind of like a BYO internet, if you will. So there's quite a bit of expertise needed wrapped around those. So, so think twice before just saying, oh, it, it, that's a lower cost one, or hey, that's our fiber then, if we, if we get that. It, there's, <laughs> it's, it's good to have a carrier that's doing a lot of the stuff for you. All that being said, this is what we do. If you need any help picking an internet connection or configuring one, give us a call. All the information will be down below in the description. I hope this has been informative for you and I wish you the best in your internet connection journey.